everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today it's all about uh, making these fish. Remember a few weeks ago, we made fish lures. Well, now we're going to take that idea and transform it into a piece of wall art. So let's just, just briefly, we'll just have a quick look at what we made a couple of weeks ago. So these are the little fishing lures. There we are. You can see that we've got a couple of different colours, and we use the airbrushes to create those. Ben, can we just go to the other close camera? Just to get a nice focus on on that on that markings that we have there. So what we've got is like a fish scale marking. If I can just turn it over, try and get it nice and close for you. Look, there we are. Zoom in and nice. There we are. We can see the fish scales. White belly, of course. Now this one was a is an actual fishing lure. Now, if you remember, I what I said is I understand that not everybody's a fisherman. Okay, so what we need to do is uh, think of a way of using the same techniques that we've used on the fishing lures and turn it into something else. Well, a very, very, um, unfortunately late but dear friend of mine um, gifted me um, this wall plaque. Uh, one day, just turned up on my step after having a, a couple of pints with him and looking at a shop across the road from the pub and saying, oh, I really like that. So the next day, this turned, it up, turned up on my step. Now, this has probably been with me and my wife now for probably about 10 years <coughs> and I've always admired it. It's a very simple thing. It's just wire on the back um, as a swirl and then just uh, a, a rough in interpretation of some fish, um, in this case metal. But I want to do something similar with our fishing lures. Now I am going to try and do a wire one like this um, with uh, the fishing lures on it. We're also just going to do a flat plaque as well just so it's 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 there for everybody everybody can have a go at doing something similar the fish we're going to make before we go back into the machine room and incidentally we're going to use three rooms today we're going to use the turning room uh, ben's crafty room and the machine room as well so before we go into the machine room to prep some timber let me just show you what shapes we're going to end up with i've i've sort of based this on mackerel so if we can go to that nice close-up shot there, Ben. There we are. We're going to look at a couple of... Come to this one, Ben, would you? The close-up. Thank you. Um, focus on that one. Those mackerel stripes. Now, this is not going to be... You don't have to be, uh, you know, take a mackerel and try and copy it. This is going to be your interpretation. So those stripes, for me, suggest mackerel shapes or mackerel... Um, patterns and this is going back to our fishing lure so it's the same sort of pattern using that webbing that netting and the very simple back fin shape and this is just a bit of split turning so we're going to do both techniques we're going to do both things so something to keep everybody happy a little bit of turning a little bit of um, uh, shaping on the bottom one there okay so i think without further ado we'll go next door we'll get into the machine room and prep some timber for our flatfish well, hi everybody. We're here in the machine room, and what we're going to do here is just prep some timber. So we've got two a fish we're going to make in this project. We're going to do a turned one, that which you'll see shortly. Um, but this is just for the flat fish. So we're just preparing some some pallets actually. Now, when you come to preparing pallets, um, if you've never done it before, just prepare yourself. It is a bit of a struggle because all the pallets um, that you get are, tend to be um, put together with a nail gun, and that's ring shank nails they're putting in, so they're really, really tough to get out. So you're going to need some time. You're going to need um, a good um, a crowbar um, of good size. Um, you need your safety specs on. Um, and you need a lot of patience. That's the other thing as well. Now, I'm not going to go cherry red in front of you trying to take this pallet apart. I've already started on this one, dismantling it. Um, I've got some pieces here. And we're going to just run them through the planar thicknesser um, just to get them down to size. Because at the moment, for what we want, they're a little bit too thick. I have measured them. They're, they're 17 mil, so quite chunky. Um, and the other good thing, or the other important thing that you must do, once you, if you select pallets, and obviously don't just go and take pallets, you need to check that they are, they are for use and they are, they are going to be thrown away, just check to make sure they're not full of grit, because a lot of these just get thrown around yards and things like that. So make sure you've got no grit in them. Once you've taken out your nails, just double check there's no residue left in those nail holes. You don't want to be running through a planer and then take a, a horrible um, uh, little gash out of your planer. Noise if you have knives. In this case, I've got um, lots of little um, individual blades, but I just want to check check this sort of thing. So there is a little bit of grubbiness on there. Make sure, like I said, there's no sand or grit or just anything that's going to damage your planer before you go. 
So there we are. I'm just going to run one piece through for you. We're not going to spend all day doing it because I want to then just um, look at cutting our shapes out. So once we've done that, once we've ran it through our plane, the thickness, so we're then going to start marking out shapes. We'll go over to the bandsaw, we'll cut those individual shapes out, and then we'll go back to our turning room and we can start shaping them. And we'll do that on the sander that I showed you earlier on. So here we are, we've got our, our um, plane thickness is set up. First thing I need to do, of course, is put my ear protections on. What we need to um, uh, and Ben's going to turn off uh, my microphone when we do that because this is um, just the nature of these machines is they're going to be a little bit noisy even though this is the, one of the quietest thicknesses that I've ever used. I'm going to set the 17 mil first. Now that's the thickness currently of those boards and then I'm going to take small probably a millimeter off at a time because they're quite thin as well um, until I'm down to around about 10 mil so about three eighths of an inch is where we aim to be on this piece. Um, I've got dust extraction um, hooked up for it here. Ben's going to turn the dust extraction on in a minute. Um, I'll run this board through, get it completely to size, um, and then we'll mark out before going to the bandsaw. So here goes Ben, if you could turn the dust extraction on for me. I'm going to move this to 17 mil. There we are. Just for the minute, everybody, I'm going to go quiet. Ben's going to turn off my microphone um, while we put these through. So there we are. All right, we're back on. So hopefully, hopefully you can hear me now. We'll just turn the dust extraction off. We're down to 10.5 mil there. So that's ample. So like I say, around about three, it's maybe a little bit proud of that. Um, and at the moment, it looks quite thin. But it w once we start getting these pieces down to their actual size, that actually um, is it's just the right thickness. So let's just get rid of the rest of our palette pieces just for the moment of course if you're going to do one piece you may as well do several but there we are look, look, I don't know whether you can see that if we go to that uh, overhead shot you can see how clean that finishes there are um, a few nail holes in it we're going to avoid those of course I've already prepped a few fish shapes now in terms of fish shapes do whatever you want you can have whatever shoal of fish you feel that you want swimming around um, I'm going to do a mackerel type pattern um, on my fish so I've got sort of mackerel shaped um, pieces to cut out a variation of sizes as well so let's start making some markings let's get it into camera shot also <coughs> and like I can say just mark around your fish a bit of hard card is better than paper it just lasts longer of course you could do again sacrifice one of your wooden cutouts to keep after you've done this, and let's do one of those. A couple of small ones. Be strategic with your with your marking to get as much out of your piece of timber as possible. But the other thing, what what I would be careful of is not making life difficult for yourself when it comes to cutting them out. If you have them so close, sometimes it's a real task to try and get 
things cut out without um, cutting into the other neighboring shapes. So look, here we are. I'll just do three for you. I have some already cut out in the other room. So this is just so you can see what we're doing. There we are. And let me show the camera a little bit better. That's what we've got so far. So we're already getting a fair old shoal of fish there. So we do the whole of that board um, and then we can cut them out. We want to aim to have around about eight to 12 pieces um, to make a, a good wall hanging. Um, and I'll show you those in a moment. So let's go to the bandsaw. Okay, so we've got all our pieces prepped to shape. Um, and again, if we can get the close up there, you can see the, the rough ragged edges where the bandsaw has, has finished cutting. We need to round those over. So we've got to make those rounded like this. This is one of the finished fish that we've already done. Um, and I just got to make the, the curved edges that, um, that suggest fish shape. So we're going to go to our sanding disc. You've seen me use the sanding disc plenty of times before. I'm going to do a couple of fish for you and then we'll take them um, and get some colour on them or start turning our split turn fish as well. So sanding disc, we must have dust extraction on this. This is on the sea jewels with our faceplate ring again. Start the lathe slow or zero and then lathe speed up. And we're going to be sanding at around about 
900 to 1,000 revs. Dust extraction on. All I want to do is round the edges, remember, at this stage. And it doesn't matter how many facets, how gnarly it is, because what we do, we'll use a finer sander, um, softer abrasive pad in a second just to blend those shapes in. So dust extraction is going on. I'm actually just tapering that front face down. And we'll do the same with the tail. Just to give it a little bit of a shape really. And then once we've done that, we can then start, start shaping. So rounding those corners over. show you what we're getting we're sort of really rounding those edges over using the corner to get into the convex curves try as much as possible to blend in any facets you're gonna have a few but we'll we'll completely take those off in the next process there we are you can see the sort of shape we're getting a nicely rounded over uh, shape there so again on the tail that back fin blending over those edges Okay, so that's what we're left with. Look at that nicely rounded over surface there. So, let's just swap things around a little bit. I'm only going to do that one for you now. So, we'll take that sanding disc away. We'll put in our soft power sanding disc. Fits in there really neatly. Now, this one is soft. So you've got some give to this one. So what we can do now is take away the facets. And you can do that quite simply by just rotating the thing as you go. And 240 grit on this, by the way. The good thing with this, or the good thing I found, is that you don't have to be over uh, fussy when it comes to the finish. We're going to paint over the top of this. Some of those little lumps and bumps actually pick up a little bit more paint. They give the piece a little bit of texture. It's taken away the worst. go just doesn't take long it's such a quick process let me show the camera that one so again that you can see how nicely rounded that edge is what might be an idea just get a little bit of hand sanding along the edges to take away any fluff that might be there now before we go any further and before i start turning for you the next process of that is putting your base um base color on so 
I've done one earlier because the material, the paints I'm using for these are actual aerosols. So they take a little bit longer than, than airbrushing will. Now we're going to do some airbrushing on this one for you uh, shortly. But basically what I've got here is a base coat of silver. Okay, and the one I'm using here today is the plastic coat one. So it's a nice silver. You can get these um, in most DIY stores um, or online. So base coat of silver, and I didn't even wait for that to dry. I then sprayed over the top in my favorite one, the Cobra, the, the graffiti art paints in that nice light blue over the top. And then I just let them both dry together. That in itself gave me another idea because what the result was in that, if we can go to the main camera, um, Ben, the result of that was was a lovely little piece um, on my sacrificial board. So there's another idea that I've, I may come up with something for you later on in the year. But that was the base. We are going to airbrush this. And I'm going to airbrush this one along with um, our piece of turned uh, work we're doing in a minute. So that's the base. Got to let that dry before we can do any airbrushing over the top. Okay, so next fish, we'll leave that one to one side just for the moment. We'll move on to our next one. So the next one will be, where has he gone? It's going to be one of these pretty little turn pieces. Now, at the moment they're split through. This is a piece of split turning we're doing. And to create that, that piece, all I've done is a couple of bits of lime and sandwiched in between those bits of lime is a piece of cardboard. Um, cardboard's just regular card and this was from back of um, uh, an old writing pad but you can use cereal packet anything like that will be good blotting paper is, was the old trick but anything to, to um, create a barrier between the two pieces of timber I didn't even um, sand the joining faces here this was just rough sawn on the band sawn glue together I've used a PVA glue okay so it's fairly quick setting it, it dried in around about 20 minutes um, to start with because well not to start with we are going to use friction drives uh, ring centers so I'm using a ring center both here and I'm using a ring center in the dry in the tailstock sorry because the first thing that would happen if you carry on and use one of these if we can just go to that one is this will act as a wedge and it will split everything open so let me put that one there and grab a ring center okay so ring center so basically these ring centers are matched so you've got the same profile on the drive as you do the tailstock center so that one can go in there and because they've got that ring around them, fingers crossed, nothing will come apart. So I'm just going to roughly dot center. I'm going to have to turn fairly quickly on this one. So when I say quickly, I mean as in rotational speed of the lathe. So around about 2,000 revs. going to use the skew in a push-pull style cut to get our shape. We've done this, like I say, we've done this a couple of weeks ago on the fishing lure video. So refer back to that one. You'll get a far more in-depth how to make fishing lure and also the painting of that lure. We're just going to do a little bit for this one. But we're going to skew cut this, so push forward and pull back, forward, back. See where we are, we're almost there now, so I think one more cut and that's going to get us to round. There we are, we're round, so now we can start shaping, so almost like a little bullet shape. And we will clean up past that ring centre in a moment. We just need it there for, for its security.
There we go. Right, now we'll do a bit of sanding. Okay, so dust extraction on. I'm just going to go 150 to 40, 400. And then the 400. Now, all I'm going to do is take off, take off the tailstock and put back that single point in drive center. I'm not going to add a huge amount of pressure though. Because what I want to do now is get rid of that waste material we've done the bulk this is now still going to hold it together i'm going to very very gently just put a wee bit of pressure on there turn down to that spot it's not going to give you much pressure it's not going to have much drive force but just enough for you to take away that little hold point right down to the center Okay, a little bit of sanding. I'm only going to use the 400. There we go. We're going to swap it over. Turn them over into this point. Even less drive now. And see how little drive I've got there. And tweak it up. Not too much though. And we're going to right down to that that little centre, right down to the, the single point, and that's enough. So that done enough just to tidy up that piece. And even sanding, holding a bit of abrasive against it causes friction, and you can see it starting to to stop the piece. Now, let's just rid of some of these tools now in terms of in terms of painting this so we have our finished fish you need to make oh probably 8 to 12 of those for one piece bearing in mind that these will be different or swimming in different directions once you paint them Okay, so just bear that in mind unless you split them then paint them then you can have them swimming in the same direction what I mean by that if I get one of each, so these here, this is some that I've already finished, they're painted, okay, as one. So you get a light underbelly and a dark top. As soon as you break them in two, okay, they'll be swimming toward each other or away from each other, okay, depending on how you do it. So you've got two different um, directions. That's fine if you're going to have a, a, a picture that has them swimming in two directions. Otherwise, you're going to have two plaques. So, like I say, 8 to 12 of those. You have two separate directions. Now, the way we're going to hold these together, I've made myself a little mount for painting. Okay, it's just got some screws pointing upwards, and I'm literally just going to screw that on there. Okay, that screwed on it, and then I can paint. Usually the silver goes on first and the blue is my, my top colour, just a hint on the top surface. Okay, and that will give you your base colour. Once you've got the base colour, then we can go back to our airbrushes. Now I'm going to do, I'm not going to have the base colour on this one, I'm just going to do the the uh, the harder airbrushing, well, not the harder, but the airbrushing to show you or to remind you how we get there. So you remember you would have put your aerosols on first if you're using aerosol paint and then your base color is that's your base color done then your airbrushing can go on next remember this was little pieces of webbing i get this from uh, lure parts online which are lure making specialists but vegetable netting is a good one it needs to be quite a fine weave 
Okay, so there we've got little, basically, electrical clips that are just holding that webbing tight and in one place. So what I'll do now, if we do a nice dark top, and then I'll do a couple of stripes just to represent what we can do over the, uh, the base color. I'm using an airbrush, and whilst I've got that airbrush working, we'll also do our other mackerel, the flat mackerel that we've we done yes uh, a minute ago. So I've got my airbrush compressor going down there, around about any, anywhere really between 25 to 40 psi works. I'm going to start with a nice dark blue, and then as it's a mackerel color, we are going to just have a, a couple of little hints of, of green in there. So the back of the piece first. I'm going to try and do this so you can see. So a nice dark back. I should be wearing gloves, but never mind. There we are. And then I'm going to start my stripes. A little bit of airbrush control now. Turn them over, same the other side. And remember these are going to be taken apart, so you don't have to match up where the stripes are. A little bit more on the top. Now just let me pop that airbrush to one side whilst I show you what we've got. We're going to use another colour in a minute. Webbing can come off. And you can see the sort of pattern we're getting at, that really nice sort of scale pattern. Okay, so the next job, let's just pop that over there. We always need to enhance that, that blue. We want to have a really dark back. So if I can now go over that with the blue again, and then we're going to add the green. So a little bit of blue. Remember, you would be spraying over your silver and, and blue. Just giving the piece a little bit of depth look. Okay, again, let's pop that down. Go to our green. Because it's a macro, if you look at a macro picture, go online and have a look at pictures of macro, you'll see that they have a green tinge, it shimmers. Again, like I say, don't forget you would always have a silver belly anyway, so get your silver base coat on before you do your airbrushing. Let me go back to the blue. I'm just going to grab our flatfish that we've already done. Okay, This one has its base coat on. So what I need to do on this one is just give it its little um, tiger stripes like you see on all mackerel. So you've got your blue top and the silver belly. Okay, And all of these, incidentally, they've had a, a white primer on them okay so it's just a little white primer a little bit more airbrush control here as we use the blue to give those stripes you need to control how much paint you're putting on because to get a nice fine line on an airbrush you need to go close and if you're spraying too much when you're close it will come out as a splodge And they're little wiggles, and you can go over the same place again, it doesn't matter. Make them random though, don't don't have them so they're, they're all the same. There we are, so we've got the lovely little lines. And again, what we need to do with that one, let's add a bit of green just to give it our mackerel look.
and we are you get that nice little mackerel sort of characteristic give that a couple of seconds to dry it should go on dry I was just rushing that on a bit but need a bun as you can see behind me we've started lining our fish up round about 8 to 12 should be ample and so the last thing to do now is we need to join all these pieces together get them set up on our plaques or on our, our bits of wire and get them hung up on the wall so now it's into the craft room um, to get the glue gun out well here we are we're in Ben's room the peace and tranquility of, uh, of the craft room so we've got all our fish made we're ready to assemble and we're going to do two for you. We're just going to do a, a straight wall plaque, but we're also going to do this uh, this shoaling fish. A couple of materials that I'm using, either uh, so normal garden wire. Uh, garden wire is quite um, it's quite strong, but what I found, if you load up with loads and loads of fish, um, then it tends to give a little bit. That is the one we're actually using because we're only going to do a few. Um, of course, you can use your wire coat hacks, uh, coat hacks, coat um, hangers. Um, or cloth hangers they work really well they're good and strong um, but just find what you can I mean garden wire is usually quite good it's good enough like I say certainly for this you might have to go to some high tensile wire, uh, wire if you want to do a big um, a wall piece but what I've had to do because we're going to use hot melt glue here um, to uh, fix these fish to our, our piece metal I've started because otherwise we're going to have so many pieces um, starting to dry that uh, it's going to come a little bit um, uh, bits falling off all over the place so I've got a couple more fish to add and I'm simply gluing them on so I'm going to place my final two in position here so these have their their little silver fins already attached okay I've simply used card you can use thin strips of wood if you want to paint them silver add a bit of color um, maybe the same uh, sort of scale patterns that uh, we've done on the body if you want to but I'm just going to add those final two make sure they're swimming in the right direction of course and then we're going to add our hot melt glue. I'm just literally throwing these on just to demonstrate for you. But get a good quick drying hot melt glue. That can start setting whilst I start to fix the other. Take the little bits of excess away. Now don't worry, I'm just going to leave that while we put the gun down. We're going to have to hold them in position just for a few seconds. Just get it drying. Obviously, the different temperatures, then you're going to get different drying times. Also, you can get different drying times of hot melt glue, so it'd be worth if you wanted, if you want a quick setting one, look at its drying time. Make sure they stay up there, up nice and true as they start to dry, and then suddenly they will become a point where you can just let them go. And what I'm going to do is just put that, move that to one side just for the minute. Let's let that dry. I'm going to bring in my wall plaque. We're going to show them both together. And we've got them done, so I'm just going to hold that down for a few more seconds. You can't put anything on top of that because otherwise you glue a stick to whatever you, you hold it down with. So it's just starting to set now. Get it out of the way. Yeah, I think I can leave it alone now. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. Once that glue is fully dry, we'll turn it over and we'll show you exactly what we've got. But in terms of um, in terms of pattern, remember the, the the effect that you're trying to get. You're trying to get that circular shoaling sort of uh, effect. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one. Just going to have a, a fish swimming in a straight line, that sort of thing. So you can go as complicated as you want. There's two lines of fish on this one and the wire one. Um, you can add a third if you want to. My original one over here, for instance, has three lines of fish swimming. Okay, so we've got the top one, then the center section, and then you've got these small ones in the middle. So that's three wires. I don't know whether we can pick that up at all in camera. Um, there we are. So three wires, you can see it here, looping around once, and then the third piece going through the middle. Mine, the one we're doing today, has only got two entirely up to you like I say it's up to you how ambitious you go those have started setting really nicely so I'm going to dare pick it up and show you what that one looks like straight away there we are as our camera 
which camera are we on all right now one thing that we will have to think about is where we're going to hang it to so you're going to just turn it around and see which looks the best for you and i think that third line coming in through that center section would actually look quite nice even if it stops sort of short just to get a few more fish in there but that's it that's that that's that one i'll turned split turned a uh, little shoal of mackerel let's get the other plaque going so with our other mackerel so if you remember we don't we made these flat fish here so again we we gave them a little mackerel sort of pattern okay and we're just going to put them flat i'm going to arrange them to start with where i think they should be and then we're going to space some of them off just to give a sort of a three-dimensional sort of look so let's a couple of these big ones on here in fact let's go next size down one of those now we're going to pack a couple off with blocks just to get a rough idea of where we should be so let's go smaller and the good thing with that is you can overhang them over each other look there's a nice looking one I think we need a small one in there. And I think maybe one last one down here. Yeah, something like that. Right then, so disassemble. We know they're all gonna fit on there. Let's start gluing. So just a little dab's all you need. We were saying right at the beginning, you know, I'm doing a, a, a pattern that I like. It's a local fish to us here in the southwest of, of the UK in mackerel. We use it all the time. See it in the restaurants all the time. So you use whatever you want to. Let's pop a little dab on there. We're going to put a big one on this one. What should we put on that one? Let's have a look. I think that'll be quite nice there. Let's go there. Now, our choice is, do we go big? Nope. We go small. Mask him a little bit. And I'm going to stop there. I think that's that's quite nice. The glue is setting nicely now. I think I'm ready. Wherever that camera is. 
hopefully things won't fall off. There we are. There's our nice little 3D piece of wall art. You can make them the colours you want to. You can make your backing whatever colour. You can frame it. You can have a deep frame, whatever you like. But let's get them both up together, Ben. Let's see what they look like. I have a favourite. I think this, this white one we just finished is my favourite. But There we are. There we are. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I certainly have. Um, send some pictures in. If you're going to do something uh, like this for yourself, please send some pictures and we'd love to see what your creations look like. Um, but I've really enjoyed that. A little bit of a stray away from turning for me. Um, and don't forget, if you like what you see, I say it every single time, give us a thumbs up. Um, share with as many people as you can. Um, and obviously subscribe. Um, and until next time, I'll see you again. Thank you very much. Bye bye.